Hey everybody, sorry I don't have a Street Magic video this week, but that's because here in th one of the difficulties is here in Canada it's winter and the weather hasn't been that good. So I'm uploading this video just so you guys, ha so I can try to help the magic community, help, street, help people who are into street magic see some of the difficulties. Well, I'm going to talk about some of the experiences with difficulties and try to help you pass them, like give you advice to overcome them and hopefully make your journey into street magic a lot easier. I'm not sure if this will help, but I'm going to try the best I can. Yeah, I'm going to discuss some of the difficulties of being a street magician. <laughs> Remember, this is seen in the point of a YouTube street magician, but I'm going to try my best to relate it to just doing street magic in general. And um, my first thing is some, it's usually difficult to get videos if, depending on your country, the weather like, for example, here it's winter, and the weather's been kind of bad, so I couldn't get any videos this week. But that depends greatly upon where you live. If you, I'm not sure what the weather's like in the States right now. But if, I'm pretty sure if you live in China, you might not be having the same problems. Remember, most of the comments and things made in this video are personally of my opinion and experiences. So if you disagree, if you have anything to add, feel free to comment below on this video. And if you like the things I say, or you agree with anything, or you, you can feel free to rate. Uh, favorite this video if you want to come back to it to uh, learn more about some difficult things in street magic, or things you might need to override if you want to start. You can feel free to favorite this video if you want. And just, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. I'm not sure if that's that side or that side right now. <laughs> I should know, I think it's that side. But uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe if you like my videos. And um, yeah, also add me as a friend. I like being friends with people. And um, yeah, hope I help you on your adventure to street magic. And I hope you enjoy it too. Make sure you have fun with your magic, that's the best part. Trust me, it's really fun once you enjoy it. As a street magician at school, it can be difficult because if you run into the same groups of people, they'll ask you to do something you've done before and you don't really want to show the same effect to the same audience, which also leads into them heckling you the second time, like always trying to turn things over. So you need to try and be creative with how you do things, like try and keep them as far away from it as possible, which is very difficult, but if you have big groups, you try to keep them on one side and have all the action on one side and then they just add their hand on top where they can't get to it. If, for example, for me, that's me doing my card switch routine. Another difficulty as a street magician, I guess mainly as a YouTube street magician, it's kind of hard finding the time to do things in between your life because you don't always have a camera around and if so, you don't always have a camera person around and uh, you don't always want to just keep bugging your friends to record you. It, I, well, at least I don't. I find it very awkward, so I like to spread it out a bit, like maybe one day a week lately, at least lately, but I'm going to try and pick up on that a bit, try and record a bit more, so that way I'm trying to get a weekly video thing going. I'm mainly a difficulty of being a YouTube street magician is always having, coming up with something new every week. It's really hard to find the time to practice a whole bunch of new stuff and have a life at the same time <laughs> and getting it mastered in a week so that's why lately my videos haven't been coming as fast it's a combination of all these things so I'm hopefully going to pick up when the weather's warmer and stuff like that because the weather's not going to be as bad but yeah definitely coming up with the stuff and practicing the stuff especially right now another difficulty of being a street magician because I find teenagers react best in my magic that's a personal thing though because my magic suits teenagers so it's really hard finding a location I find my school tends to be the best place but people aren't always there after school which is my best filming time people aren't usually walking around so I'm gonna start I might start getting the same location in my videos which I want to vary that so I'm gonna try walking around to different places but the location is very hard to get and um, usually people who aren't teenagers don't react very well to my magic. Sometimes being a street magician, uh, it's kind of hard to go up to people in the first place. Sometimes walking by, I just 
say, okay, I'm going to go up to the next person I see, start walking, see somebody, and then say, okay, the next person I see, walk, see somebody, and just keep repeating that over and over again until I just absolutely force myself to do it. So sometimes it's really hard going up to people to do it in the first place. So yeah, it takes a lot of building up to do it. I'm starting to get more into it where I just walk up to the first people I see now, but it doesn't always work that way. Another thing that's awkward sometimes when I'm just, like diff another difficulty of being a street magician is sometimes when you're just hanging out with your friends or walking down the street, people from cars at my, from my school, when I'm like, three blocks down, people with cars will stop, people in their cars will stop asking me to do a magic trick. <laughs> Which is always <laughs> really awkward but kind of funny too. Because yeah. I don't even know who half these people are. People mm -hmm. walking down through my school mm. telling me to do something or calling me magic and stuff like that. Mm. It's pretty cool but sometimes when you're in serious conversations or like in a really serious conversation with people, and then people will probably people come up to me personally, my personal experience. People come up to me asking me to do something while I'm in a serious conversation, which kind of ruins the moment, and it's really awkward. Another difficulty I find hap that happens a lot at places like schools, mainly at school, uh, is people compare you a lot to the big TV stars who for sometimes you're compared to their camera tricks and stuff like that and they expect you to like do stuff right on the spot that even they, even the people on TV haven't done in person <laughs> which is really hard to do and challenged to do that but usually you just when you're asked to do that just continue on and just pretend you didn't hear it because they usually just change the subject right after that or stop and you usually freak them out anyways and they end up being just as amazed because I find the small effects work to give just as good an impact as the big effects if you do them correctly like I'm sure sometimes if I was to just do a small levitation and they could wave underneath me or do whatever they probably wouldn't get as big a reaction as they would with some card tricks even though it is a bigger effect Sometimes the smaller ones can be presented to be bigger effects. Another thing with the street magic thing, sometimes it's really hard to build up the confidence to go out to people. I'm still, I guess, not 100% confident, but I'm building it up. I find the only way you can really do that is to get out in front of real people, practice as much as you can, and try to present it to random people, or start off with your friends and stuff first, to find so you know how you pre present your magic. And then you go out in front of real people and just try your best. If you screw up, at least you tried and you gained some experience. And if you do screw up, don't f be afraid to try again. Just keep trying. Practice your best first. Keep mm. trying, and you will gain the experience. Mm. I'm sorry for the knuckle crack. <laughs> Another difficulty if you do flourishes is if you you can't s you have to practice them until you know you're not gonna ever screw up while adding flourishes into your magic if you do extreme card manipulations and flourishes and stuff, you need to master them to the point where you can fit them in and not make the spectators suspicious of anything. And you, it's probably best to start off like you can't handle cards and after the first couple effects progress in your skills like do a fancy cut and then later on move into better and better flourishes so they are already believe your magic and then they start to see that you're also skilled and I find it's a good combination, but <laughs> mind the camera shake. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I find it's a good combination, but uh, it that's up to you guys to decide.